Poker has been played for hundreds of years now, but there have been some poker hands and stories that have achieved legendary status. What is up guys, Maxi from Poker Bounty bringing you today 5 shocking poker hands and stories that you will not believe. Number 1. Stu Unger's Insane Hero Call In 1990, Stu Unger had a chance to become the only player in history to win 3 main event titles in freeze out format. Having already been crowned champion in 1980 and 81, Unger held the commanding chip lead as the tournament neared its conclusion in 1990, but having gone back to his hotel room at the end of the second day, his bad habits got the best of him. Unger spent the night snorting and overdosed, ending up in the hospital. As a result, he missed the final day of the tournament, ultimately finishing 9th place for $25,000 simply by being blinded off. Mansoor Matlobi won the main event that year, but once he had recovered, Stu Unger was keen to prove a point to the new world champion and the rest of the world. Stu Unger claimed that if he had been able to play the final day of the tournament, he would easily have defeated Matlubi and the rest of the remaining field to become world champion. To prove this, he challenged Matlubi to a $50,000 heads-up freeze-out match. The duel eventually took place at the Four Queens early next year. Matlubi initially took the lead in the match, then Unger nudged in front. With blinds of 200, 400 and Stu Unger holding 60,000 to Matlubi's 40,000, the players were dealt 10-9 offsuit and 4-5 offsuit respectively. Unger started the action with a race to 1600 and Matlubi called holding 5-4 offsuit. The flop came 3-3-7 rainbow and Matlubi checked and Stu Unger made a big bet close to 6000, which Matlubi called with his gut shot straight draw. Both players then checked the king turn. The river was a queen and smelling weakness in Stewie, Matlubi jammed all in with the $32,000 he had back. After only a few seconds, Unger called out his opponent's hand and ended the match with a stroke of genius saying, you have 4-5 or 5-6, I call. Stu Unger flipped up his 10 high to the astonishment of those watching, winning the match and proving his point to the world. This is possibly one of the greatest poker calls in poker history. Number 2. Jack Strauss Pick a Card Bluff Between creating the chip in the chair maxim and the pick a card bluff, Jack Treetop Strauss had two controversial stories associated with his name. It has been called one of the most famous poker hands in poker history. The game was no limit hold'em and Jack Strauss started with a 7-deuce offsuit, the worst starting hand in poker. Strauss should have folded straight away but he actually raised. As a result, all but one of the opponents put their cards down with the remaining players calling. The flop produced 7-3-3. This was an excellent flop for Strauss. It was very unlikely that his opponent would call a big raise with a 7 or a 3 of any form so he fired a $3,500 bet. His opponent, however, came back on top of him with a $5,000 raise. This changed the picture completely. It was highly likely that he had top pair of some kind or at least an A7 perhaps. Again, most hands would end there with a fold. However, Strauss made a call confusing his opponent. The turn came a deuce. Of course, this did not help Strauss because he already had a higher two pair. He fired a $20,000 bet anyway. This is where the story starts to get extraordinary. The other player was heavily contemplating his move. Strauss is obviously keen not to get called on that 20k bet, so he made the following proposition. For a $25 chip, he offered to let his opponent see one of his two hole cards. After much contemplation, the opponent agreed, pointed to one of the cards, and Strauss flipped over the deuce. At this point, the opponent was completely thrown off. In the end, he figured that the only way Strauss would have made the proposal that he made was if both of his cards were the same and the pocket deuces gave him a full house. So Strauss's opponent mocked his pocket jacks and Strauss entered poker folklore. The beauty of the play was that even if the opponent had chosen the other card, seeing a 7 would have probably led him to the same thought process. Number 3. Johnny Moss vs Nick the Greek Dandelos Benny Binion had arrived in Las Vegas in 1946, having essentially fled Dallas where a checkered past of bootlegging, theft, illegal gambling and other crimes had finally threatened to catch up to him. With a partner, Binion soon took over the Las Vegas club. Three years later, Nick the Greek Dandelos came into the town looking for some poker action. The Greek was a renowned gambler with an enormous bankroll. He was smart, 
well-educated and charming, but also sometimes reckless and unpredictable. Nick wanted to play the biggest game the world can offer. Benny Binion agreed to set it up, but there was one condition that it had to be open to the public because Benny Binion wanted the publicity. Nick agreed. So Benny called a friend in Dallas, Johnny Moss. Johnny was a rounder, probably the best poker player in the world at that time. He was at the end of a four-day poker session when the call came. Nevertheless, the rounder immediately packed his bags and got on a plane. When Johnny Moss arrived, he didn't bother unpacking. He simply went to the casino, found Nick, shook his hand, and the two men began playing poker. The game lasted for five months. Each session usually lasted up to four or five days, then the players would break up for sleep. Johnny Moss supposedly had an edge in stamina since he was a relatively youthful 42 compared to Nick at 56. But Nick seemed to have more energy. Johnny would return from sleeping breaks to find Nick playing craps. The main game was 5 card no limit stud, $100 antis. But they also played 7 card stud, 7 card high low and low ball. Nick and Johnny Moss had bankroll that stretched up to the millions. Most of the action was heads up but other players were allowed to join the game from time to time. The minimum buy-in was $10,000. Nobody survived more than a few days against the Greek and Johnny, however. Each visitor's buy-in was sucked into the money vortex as millions flowed back and forth. The biggest single pot was approximately half a million dollars. After five months of play, the Greek was down over two million dollars. Finally, he rose from the table and uttered a phrase that has since been immortalized in poker folklore. The Greek said, Mr. Moss, I have to let you go. Poker historians have been arguing over the veracity of the story and whether or not it actually took place, regardless, it will likely remain a part of poker folklore for the rest of time. Number 4. Poker Fatality This has apparently happened two times in recorded poker history and while the notion of someone dying while playing poker is not at all that hard to imagine, some of the specifics regarding these two famous events seems to be a little harder to stomach. Tom Abdo, one of the early poker practitioners in Las Vegas, reportedly suffered a heart attack while playing poker. Abdo was playing a game when the heart attack struck and was treated as soon as possible. The part that really stood out was that as he was being cared for, he asked another player to count his chips and save his seat. While suffering a fatal cardiac arrest, the man planned to come back to the table. Unfortunately for Abdo, he passed away that evening. For his sheer commitment, Abdo was entered into the Poker Hall of Fame in 1982. The other poker-related fatality was a bit more famous or perhaps infamous is a better term. A legend of the Wild West, Bill Hickok was a man who held many roles during his life. Gunslinger, lawman, drover, even a showman, but the one which is most relevant to the history is his love for gambling. Wild Bill was a gambler who played well and fast, apparently well enough that he thoroughly riled up a gambler by the name of Jack McCall who was so incensed by Hickok that he shot him in the back while he was playing a game of poker in Deadwood, North Dakota. According to legend, Hickok was holding a pair of aces and eights, his discarded card had not yet been replaced. Hickok, like Abdo, was enshrined in the Poker Hall of Fame, part of the inaugural class of 1979. Number 5. This is one of those stories that is just too impossible to believe, but many people do actually believe this happened. According to the story, Annette Oberstar decided to play a 180-man sit-and-go tournament without looking at her whole cards, in some bizarre attempt to prove that the cards are not at all important in poker. After placing a piece of paper on her screen so she couldn't see her whole cards, Oberstad focused on chip sizing and timing tells to read her opponents to the best of her ability. Somehow, much of the poker world takes the story at face value regardless of the fact that it's nearly impossible to make sure you don't see your whole cards during a poker tournament. She said she only looked at her whole cards once when she was facing an important all-in call. Outside of this though, Annette Oberstar battled through the 180 player field without checking her cards. What's amazing is that she won the large hit and go tournament without ever knowing her hand strength. The only problem with Oberstar's victory was that nobody was there to film it. However, she's widely believed to be telling the truth based on her tournament success. So those were the top 5 poker stories that are hard to believe. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.